all right guys welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're gonna be animating pools so this is actually just a follow-up from our last video which was how to make a med kit which i'll show you guys uh the med kit that we made was this one so yeah as you guys can see it's pretty simple but you guys did say that uh i should make a video on how to animate it so that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video as i mentioned so let's get into it all right, so what you guys want to do is, you guys want to go to your Avatar section and click on Rig Builder, and then click on Block Rig. Uh, I prefer Block Rigs, R15 Block Rigs, because uh, they just have more parts to move around and they're a lot simpler compared to other rigs. So now we have that. So now what we have to do is open up our animation editor. You can use the Roblox one or you can use whichever plugin one that you have downloaded or installed. So now click on your dummy and name your animation clip whatever you want. I'm gonna name it uh, animation underscore make it one. You can name it whatever you want. Now click on what part of the body you want to move, quite simply like this. And you can also switch the move tool and then just move up and down. So we're gonna do that with the other arm over here. Just make sure to spread out your timeline with your mouse or whatever because otherwise your animations will all be cramped into the same space. So like for example, if I just decide to move the other arm like this and then I shortly after that I just moved the leg like this, it would look quite cramped in. Okay. So uh, yeah. So you can see that's like quite cramped in and it looks a bit weird. So that's why you have to spread it out along the timeline. So like this, just move it along. And now it looks a lot better, a lot more realistic. So now we're just gonna reset the first one, the first arm, because otherwise it looks a bit weird if it's automatically raised out, raised up. So we got that as the basics of animation. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise the arm a bit. So first move this first animation keyframe, or you can delete it if you want. I'm just gonna keep it there for now. It's the arm one, yeah. So now uh rotate this part. And you've probably already seen this like like just now. It moves like the whole arm if you click on the upper arm. And same thing applies for the lower arm, it'll move the hand as well. Same thing applies for legs and yeah, and parts of the torso. So now we're gonna be moving our other arm, put to the side like this. I mean our lower arm to the side like this. Bring our left arm closer and make it go towards the center. All right, something like that should do. Uh, let's also move it down a bit. Yeah, you know, yeah. And rotate that. Alright, so now our animation looks like this. It's not so bad, but it's not great either. I mean, I'm not great at animation. But yeah, this should do for now. You guys can change it if you want. So now we got that. So click on the three dots over here next to your uh, animation name. And before we uh, publish it, we have to first save it and then set the animation priority. So there are four types of animation priority. One is core, which is like the main one. Then there's idle, which is when your character is moving. And then there's movement, when your character is like running or sprinting. And then there's action. And action has um, like four classes. They're all the same basically. But basically um, it's like punching, um, maybe uh, like a special emote and stuff like that. So since ours is like using the medkit, we're gonna uh, click on action. So now we got that, so now we can click publish to Roblox. So now we have published it, we're gonna click submit. Uh, now if it doesn't go through and says uh, like some if this appears in red or it like says was not submitted properly or something like that, then you gotta change the name. Because either you have another animation or another object in your inventory with the same name, or your animation name isn't appropriate. So with that out of the way, we have to click copy over here, or just the icon there. You can close it now, and now comes the scripting part. 
close off your animation editor and open up your output, which we closed just now. So now go over to your medkit. And now we're going to use the same script that we used from before. And in here, actually, we can use a different script. Hmm, sorry guys, so yeah, different script. Now this is going to get a bit complicated because we're going to have some, we're going to have to use something called remote events, which I don't know if we've used yet. So we're going to use a new script, um, a normal script. And uh, first let's name our healing script, our old like it script, healing script, just so we can differentiate between the two. Okay, so now here, before we type any code, what you want to do is go over to your replicated storage over here. And then, you want to click on a remote event. So, now you've added a remote event here. And in here, you can also add an animation. So, we're going to add the animation. And we're going to paste our animation ID in here. So, we got that. So basically, what the remote event is going to help us do is, whenever we play the animation, it's going to detect our key input. We're going to use user input service. And therefore, we're going to need to use a remote event. So like in a game, other players will see us doing the animation. If you want to avoid this, you can just use a local script, which we will cover in another video. But for now, we're going to do it this way. So we're going to do local, hmm, local UIS, user input service. Actually, uh, no, it's a... Uh, we're gonna have to trigger the fire event. Yeah, so local UIS equals to user service. Or no, game colon get service. User input service. Okay, so now we got that. That's in our med kit. And now we're gonna have to detect it. So, UIS dot input begin colon connect function and put over here like that and now comes the code so if input dot key code dot yeah input dot key code equal equals to enum dot key code dot let's make it q i guess q then oh no oh wait we don't need this yeah guys i'm sorry i'm sorry guys uh bear with me we don't need this at all because we want it to play when we use the animation. Okay. So we're just going to try and delete this now. Okay. And now go into your healing script, guys. Sorry. Okay. So now, you're going to have to... Uh, now, this is the power we have to uh, get the remote event. So, you guys are first going to want to make a variable for it. So, local remote event. Let's just use RE. Now let's just type it out remote event equals to game that replicated storage dot remote event and now the animation local animation then equals to game dot replicated storage dot animation so now we got those so now what we have to do is we're gonna go over here and use remote event colon fire server out okay server fire server like that okay make sure you type this properly so um f capital and s also capital so like this you can yeah so now it should go over to the user input i mean the remote event over here basically the fire server basically makes it go over to the remote event which is like the server and you can add a script inside here now that will detect that so script.parent dot on server event colon connect function and our parameter is player so now we got that so what we're going to do is player dot let's make a, this into a variable okay so local char equals to player dot character yeah and then you could let's see if we can make this into yeah we can okay so that's what we have for now now we're gonna make the humanoid so local humanoid equals to 
charred the uh, humanoid. Now, the animation uh, variable, which will be local animation equals to uh, script dot parent dot parent dot animation. And now we have to make like another variable, guys. I'm sorry. So yeah local animation track so basically if you try and play our animation just using this variable it will not work because the humanoid has to sort of like load it you know like if you put a cd into um a disc player yeah it has to load it first so the local animation track equals to humanoid colon load animation type this out manually brackets or parentheses and now put the animation inside the variable that is and now you can do animation track colon hmm, colon play like that so now you got that and just to check that it works we're gonna use print here just to make sure that it detects the server fire event fire server event so um okay server fire yeah let's just type something like that yeah, that should also go over here, you know, just to make sure that it works properly. Mm-hmm. That the same thing. Print. Brackets. Um, fire. Yeah, server fired. Server fired. Alright. So now, lastly, you just move the med kit. Oh. Now, all we have to do is just move the med kit. Sorry, guys, I'm lagging a bit. Uh, okay, so move the med kit into your starter pack so now you should be able to play the game and you should uh be able to play the animation when you activate the make it which i'll show you guys now if there's an error we can easily correct that so let's check it out okay we're loading in and hmm. loading okay there we go okay so we got it now Okay, geez, fall over. Uh, okay, so now let's try activating it. Ah, okay, fire server can only be called from the client. Ah, guys, I see our mistake. Okay. So, so this, I kind of expected this, but I didn't really know if it was going to happen. So basically, the problem is we used a normal script, which kind of like runs on the server. So what we have to do to easily change this without having like write a whole new script is to just... Click on your script here, click on run context, and change it from legacy to client. Now you can see it has a little computer icon there, so yeah, now it should work. So let's test that. Okay. You can also see that it changes to like a blue color. Yeah. That means that it's not a local script that only runs on or for the player, like me for example. So uh, let's try. So, you can see that it's just over fired, and this is from the healing script. But from the animation, something's something's not right. Yeah, it's not really transmitting it to the remote event. Okay, so the remote event. Ah, uh, guys. Oh my gosh. So Roblox did change something in here, which was um that now most scripts um most scripts they or they spawn in or you put when you put them in they have legacy as their run context and that can be really bad when you're trying to use remote event and a local script because it uses the legacy version like the old version of scripts which doesn't really run well with the new remote event con so this time we're gonna try it and hopefully it works all right you can see that our animation is now playing and that's great and yeah you can check click over on this and you can see that it's actually running from the server now so that means other players will be able to see us when we put when we do the animation so i can uh go back to um the client over here so if i click it and then yeah you guys will see it like other players will see it when you do the animation so guys that's all for this video I'm sorry if my uh, commentary was a little runny, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.